I'm here with Ben Lackey from Neo4j, director of Pod Partner Architecture. Maybe you recognize him because we did a video with him a few months back, and now they're here at Google Cloud Next. Ben, thank you so much for being here and for talking to us. Can you tell us a little bit about what Neo4j is doing with generative AI? Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, we've been really excited to be part of the launch with uh, Google and generative AI. Uh, that, that work really kicked off in June. And at the time, it focused on this kind of two-part data flow. Uh, so one part, like let's take some structured or unstructured data, feed it into generative AI, and use generative AI to create what are called cipher statements. Cypher is uh, Neo4j's query language. And we can then run those statements against the database to populate it. So what that architecture does is you're going from data here that you may know things about or nothing about at all, and you're extracting a graph from that automatically. Previously, that would have been a whole bunch of work, a lot of manual, ETL, ESB, all those wonderful acronyms. You're paying for it in compute time, you know, fewer developer hours, you're burning a whole bunch of compute, but it's a much lower cost way to automate this whole thing. So that's like part one of the data flow. Part two is, hey, I've built this knowledge graph from this unstructured or semi-structured data, uh, how can I interact with it? And what we're seeing a lot of our customers do is uh, put a chatbot on top powered by generative AI with Langchain. And that converts natural language queries into these cipher queries that can be run against the database. You can get information out and then present it back to the user. Uh, all sorts of nice things about that working around the time cutoff for generative AI uh, and helping ground the results because presumably what you've stored in your database is factual versus whatever the Gen AI may come up with, which could potentially be a hallucination. That's very cool, thank you for sharing that. Okay, so out of these two parts, yeah. which is the most interesting to you? Like, which are you most excited about? I am biased on this. Uh, I spent way too long in the uh, data plumbing space. Uh, so like, 20 years ago, I was working with large banks to try to move data around with straight through processing systems and things like that. And it's fascinating to see how you can automate large chunks of that process now. And you're seeing this all around us. Uh, Deutsche Bank has a booth over here uh, talking about using generative AI to create client briefings. And like I can imagine all sorts of scenarios how these architectures could work together for use cases like that. That's super interesting. I always love to hear with your expertise what you're excited about. Um, can you tell me about anything new that's coming up with Neo4j? I can tell you about a new thing that recently happened, oh, uh, which is a little different than coming up, but hopefully works. <laughs> True. I believe it was August 17th, very recently, uh, we announced uh, the ability to do vector search and index in the database. So right now people are very interested in vector databases to store these vectors that can be uh, fed into LLMs, embeddings of natural language and all. We're trying to do like a best of both worlds thing where we have that feature, but it can be attached to a graph. And the idea is it unlocks a use case around semantic search. So you take these freeform text documents uh, once again, you use generative AI, this time to compute an embedding. That embedding is stored in the graph and is then searchable, so you can find other parts of the graph that are similar, similarities between documents. Thank you so much for talking to us. As always, it's a pleasure. Neo4j, our graph database partner here at Google Cloud for a very long time. Uh, wow. And I hope you have a great rest of the time at the conference. Thanks so much. All right.